en el nombre de Dios, más compasión tenemos excelencias y highnesses. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies, and we are delighted to host His Excellency Ambassador Mohammed Al Jaber, Ambassador of Saudi Arabia to Yemen, and the Supervisor of the Development and Reconstruction of Yemen. The Ambassador will talk about the Saudi the Saudi program for development and reconstruction of Yemen and what they are going to do in this program. And prior to that, he will give us an overview about the political and economic situation in Yemen. And he is an expert in this area. And, and the ambassador will talk in 30 minutes or 40 minutes. And this will be followed by a documentary film. And then we will take uh, questions and comments. Before we start, I hope that all of you put your phones on the silent mode. And the speech is going to be in Arabic, but there is simultaneous interpretation. Your Excellency the Ambassador, the floor is yours. Uh, May Allah's peace and blessing be upon you, and pray and thanks to Allah, and may Allah's peace and blessing be upon you. Excellencies and Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance, and I am honored to talk to you in this short uh, space of time about Yemen and about the humanitarian situation in Yemen, about the development and reconstruction in Yemen. The, uh, I try to, bring my, to make my information brief, and you have the freedom to ask the questions after the speech on your consents and the areas that you need to have answers on that. I will talk about the Saudi Yemeni Saudi Yemeni relationships and the uh, political and, se and security and social socio-economic uh, situation in Yemen, and then we will talk about uh, development and reconstruction. When when we talk about the Saudi-Yemeni relationships, we need to assert that these are ancient and very old relationships, and these are geographical. Uh, there is a geographical extension between Yemen, and there is humanitarian also or human uh, also. Saudi Arabia and Yemen are not neighbors, but there are uh, towns and villages that are uh, transcend, and there are uh, you may find also you may find also uh, Saudis and Yemenis. They may have uh, tribes extended across the border. In addition to having millions of Yemenis in Saudi Arabia whether they are from Yemeni origin or they are working in Saudi Arabia or they have intermarriages. Uh, another issue, we have a huge support by Saudi Arabia in the past decades and that support was not economic but it was political support for the legitimate government uh, governments in Yemen. And in 2009 when uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh, the former president of Yemen, we were there, and Saudi Arabia supported that. And in 2011, when there was a, a disagreement between the Yemeni people and the, the government, Saudi Arabia intervened to uh, to stop the shed blood and to save blood. And we provided uh, provided the full support uh, economically and development mode. In 2014. When the Yemenis agreed to uh, uh, reach an agreement under the ages of, uh, under the ages of the UN, and there was an advisor to the president of Abdurrahman Rabbi Mansour and Saudi Arabia and all the international community supported that because the Yemenis have agreed on that that will maintain the state and the government and the security and stability in Yemen. It is very important to. Uh, assert that there are a lot of Yemenis working in Saudi Arabia and when the Houthis attacked the cities and towns a lot of Yemenis fleed 
or fled Yemen and came to Saudi Arabia and we received them in Yemen and we didn't put them in camps. We, we received them and we gave them visit visas and the opportunity to work and we helped them. And it is very important to say that the security of Saudi Arabia and the security of Saudi Arabia and Yemen are interlinked. And we need to maintain the security in Yemen and in Saudi Arabia, even the rain that we share the rain with, Ye with Yemen. When there is rain, the same, the same rain falls in Yemen and in Saudi Arabia. As you can see, uh, the uh, geographical location of Yemen, it is well known to you. You have a border that extends more than 1,400 1, kilometers. And so it is easily accessible and 2,500 kilometers across the sea or the coastline through the uh, Gulf of Aden. And there are political uh, profound deep challenges in Yemen that are uh, uh, that go across history, but the largest, the biggest challenges that faces the face Yemen is the Houthi militia that is supported by Iran that have con have, have control of the state uh, institutions and it has destroyed the state uh, institutions. And even the harmony between the disagreements between the Yemeni government and the opposition. So they have political fights, political fights, and they do not use the force. But the militias, the Houthi militias, have changed that situation. And there are also party uh, differences. And these were related to the tribes. And they have also, this had influence on the political situation there. And you have the uh, the southern uh, the southern Yemen uh, movement also because the militia is attacking the south and they are using systematic destruction and we have other challenges with regard to the governance or and there is a governance that the Houthis want which is the Irani uh, govern government system uh, and you have Al Khomeini uh, uh, who is Abdel Malik Al Houthi. And there is another uh, prime minister in Yemen who is linked to uh, this was not accepted by the Yemenis and would not be accepted. And there is another model, which what the Yemenis have reached in their uh, dialogue uh, to have a federation and to have the stability and the integrity of the territorial integrity of Yemen. And it will, it will also distribute the wealth and resources. And you have the security challenges. I affirm that the largest, the, la the biggest challenge is uh, security challenge is the uh, Houthi militias that took control of the institutions, and you have the ballistic missiles and the air aircrafts, and even the human resources that have been trained in the past, and you have the uh, Daesh and ISIS and Al Qaeda in Yemen, and in 2014, the, the Yemeni government, in collaboration with other government, uh, with other in Saudi Arabia and the USA and other countries to uh, to confront uh, to confront al qaeda in yemen uh, when the houthis took control of sana'a and uh, the battalions and the weapons that they are fighting with are these uh, were uh, all the arms uh, that the yemeni uh, army was trained on and you have the uh, there is a need also for reorganization, restructuring of the army in Yemen and to protect the borders of Yemen to facilitate uh, having security there. And also we have uh, social challenges. And in fact, the, so the Yemeni, the Yemeni uh, uh, is well known for coexistence. And you have some differences in politics and religious differences. But the Houthi came with sectarianism from Iran to, uh, and this would not be accepted in Yemen, uh, across Yemen. And what the Houthis is, is, are doing uh, has contributed in dismantling the social fabric in Yemen. Even the tribal traditions uh, and the customs have been destroyed by the Houthis by, since they have destroyed the tribal fabric in Yemen. Another social uh, challenge, as you can see on the screen, the uh, the population of Yemen 
and there are uh, 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 55% are below the age of 25, and, and we have more than 40% who are the less than 15%. So the average age is uh, 22 years, and this is a young country, a youthful country, and, and uh, the Houthis are recruiting the children, and you can see the unemployment rate is high with regard to women. These numbers need to be reconsidered because Yemen is different, because women work in, in agriculture and in uh, livestock. And women could have larger contribution, and they do contribute in the livelihood of the different households, households and families. And there is also the Human Development Index in Yemen, and Yemen is a poor country in terms of uh, uh, of this. Uh, 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 this is the average age of uh, uh, the children being born. And the uh, national I or the income uh, in 2014, this was high. Uh, this index was high, and because of the war by the Houthis, this has gone down. And these numbers that you can see on the screen can give a, a, an indication about that. The economic challenges, and I have put them because this speech is related to that. But the economic challenge is one of the biggest that is being used in Yemen to have political pressure and political court and the houses are using this to kill the Yemenis and if you remember 2014 they have uh, raised the banner that they have they are wanting to to fight uh, corruption and and they are still uh, they are using the economy in supporting their uh, war efforts by hampering the operations of the national bank or the central bank or preventing the export of oil or they collect or also they uh, they collect also or they tax the Yemenis and this is a negative uh, indicator you may I may uh, show some slides about the GDP in Yemen it was improving after the Gulf uh, initiative and in 2014 it went down and it deteriorated in 2018 and the per capita the per capita income in Yemen uh, went down also and it went down in 2018 and you can see in 2014 the reference is the IMF in both uh, slides and this is the impact of the Yemeni of the uh, Houthi militia on life in Yemen and you can see the export and the imports and you see the imports has gone, uh, fallen down and most of the exports are uh, of oil and gas and the pipeline, the pipeline between uh, Marib and to the port in addition to the difficulties with regard to technology and having foreign exports expert for exporting oil and this situation has improved now and there is a trend in this uh, uh, in order to uh, increase the export in order to improve the revenues of the state and you have the expenditure there was an increase in the expenditure in 2012 and 13 and 14 and then they fell down in 2015 and it was it has the, the largest the largest deficit in 2017 of the budget and it is very important that you could see and i need to refer to this uh, uh, to king Faisal center efforts uh, this book and i advise uh, all the attendees uh, to have a look at this book uh, this book has been produced by King Faisal Center and it has a good diagnosis of the link between the politics, uh, the, the politics and the economy and up to 2015 and you see the expenditure of uh, expenditure uh, uh, the, the highest or the largest share was the uh, uh, largest share was the salaries and wages and the commodities and the 
and the uh, also there is uh, there is a subsidies for subsidies for oil, and this affected the economy. And the revenues of the state, uh, the the main are in oil and gas, and also the taxes. Uh, the gas and oil has stopped has stopped, and there is small amounts being sold uh, at the present time. And in the past, it was 1,400 uh, uh, barrels a day, and the taxes, uh, Houthi. Uh, uh, Houthi collects the taxes from the Yemenis to support their, as you can see, the foreign exchange, the foreign exchange or foreign reserves in Yemen, foreign currency reserves in Yemen. In the past, it was uh, large, and there was one billion uh, uh, U.S. dollars being offered or offered by Saudi Arabia to the national to the central bank in Yemen. And then it uh, it went. It has fallen. It dropped, and it reached in 2017 uh, point, point 0.6 billion. And after the Saudi intervention with the uh, uh, central bank, uh, now it reached 2,000 uh, 2.8. And we hope that it will improve, and the international community can could contribute in helping the central bank in Yemen to. And these are the main challenges, and this is a, a, global, a, a general picture. The humanitarian situation in Yemen. Uh, Yemen is going through a difficult humanitarian situation. And this situation has increased uh, when the militias, Houthi militias entered. But I want you to show this information from the documents of the UN since 2002 with regard to the humanitarian response uh, plan in 2013 up to 2019 and the uh, needy people was stable in 2012 and uh, when when the Houthis took control of because they have destroyed the organization that helped the Saudi that this number has increased until it reached 24 in 2014 uh, and the total support there is an increase since 2013 and 14, and the humanitarian situation was difficult at that time, and there was more than 14 million people uh, in need of assistance. And I would like, and I would like to explain that the number of the people in need, uh, even the small uh, children, are in need, uh, uh, because we are talking about that uh, humanitarian need. After Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, before talking about the uh, comprehensive plan, in 2015, after Saudi Arabia saw the uh, deterioration of the humanitarian situation in Yemen, it created King Salman Center for relief and humanitarian efforts in, uh, in supporting the Yemenis in all the provinces, without any exception. A King, uh, King Salman Center has reached these uh, uh, areas in Yemen, and this center was established in order to, uh, as a response to the situation in Yemen. And now uh, it is spread across uh, many Arab and Muslim countries to help uh, uh, the needy people across the world, and it is helping the Yemeni people in all areas. And there are some ideas that some, uh, some countries might uh, make use or might take advantage of uh, King uh, Salman Center. And how to bring children from the war back to uh, to the civilian line. And this, uh, there was a number of uh, money and financial resources and the human, but Saudi Arabia and the UAE uh, and have created a plan for a uh, humanitarian uh, operation plan. And, and this is more than providing humanitarian and food uh, food supplies. And we are continuing in providing this, uh, whether this through uh, King, Faisal, uh, King, Salman, King Salman Center to provide, uh, uh, to provide uh, and we increased the number of air and seaports uh, crossing points. Uh, and we pushed also the 
import the imports or through the uh, uh, through the measures of the government in order to increase the imports to Yemen and we have also uh, repaired the roads uh, between Sana'a and Aden and Aden and inside the Dali province in order to uh, facilitate the uh, traffic of the trucks and also providing cranes for all Yemeni, Yemeni ports in Socotra and Yemen and there are other programs in this area with regard to the humanitarian uh, uh, situation plan and you can see you have a slave, a rice Issa a slave and I hope that the uh, uh, Houthi militias would withdraw from this and you have other airports being operational and there are other ports being open to humanitarian organizations and the Houthis have destroyed some parts of that and in targeting the Saudis and and after the legitimate government have restored or retaken areas of Sada. And now currently we are working on this and within a month uh, that uh, it will work commercially instead of working at the humanitarian aid. And I affirm tonight that any international organization that want to work in Yemen through Atwal, we could provide help or if they want uh, to use the Gizan port, we could help them and we could hover, offer the help. And in other areas, there are risks with regard to the presence of the Houthi Yemenis. One of the uh, initiatives in this regard, an airport or an airfield was opened and there were hundreds, hundreds or tens of aircraft that reached the Marib and Sana'a and we have facilitated the access of the uh, relief organizations and i would like here to uh, that the, the saudi deposit uh, uh, that have influenced that has influenced the situation in yemen because it has been eroded uh, uh, the uh, real uh, uh, yemeni real has been eroded and the also the reserve the foreign currency reserve has uh, uh, has dropped because of the Houthi war and until the Saudi intervened and they have deposited uh, a large amount of money and the price of oil and diesel has gone down and these are the most recent recent statistics and I wanted to make my references international international and also the retail uh, prices uh, or consumer prices uh, and we haven't stopped the uh, support of the Yemeni people and we have contributed with the Central Bank of Yemen in having uh, credits uh, less than six months or five months you could see 650 million of basic basic uh, goods and commodities from commodities from the Yemeni government and the central bank and we are working with them and you can see as wheat is 50 percent in the need and we are working to having bank guarantees uh, from Saudi Arabia to Yemen to secure the food supplies and you can see the humanitarian and Saudi Arabia supported uh, 1500 million and the UAE and there were 500 uh, million for by other relevant organizations so Saudi Arabia has provided 750 million people in 2019 this year for the humanitarian response in addition to other friendly countries that some of them were were not able to, to take part but uh, to make sure that other countries have contributed to that and the, there is a package so the uh, support package for supporting uh, the salaries and uh, um, the UAE also has support provided uh, a similar amount of um, uh, supporting the food security uh, the UNICEF has provided uh, Saudi Arabia and UAE has provided 70 million to the UNICEF and there are also uh, fuel and there are uh, there are uh, assistance that uh, uh, calculated by King Faisal Center and you can see that on the website of King Salman Center uh, with this regard 
and there were more than 14 billion dollars and this is a Saudi uh, a platform that is present at King Salman Center and these uh, numbers are increasing so we still support Yemenis and these figures uh, change on a monthly basis. I will take you to the development and reconstruction and this is important part. What Saudi Arabia has provided in 2006 up to 2014 you could see that this number, uh, this is with the uh, Yemeni planning uh, uh, ministry and all the countries uh, that contributed uh, the government of Khalid Bahah. These are the, uh, the latest updates. Uh, uh, this was the organization of accelerating the donors. Al-Alim was responsible for that in, ad in addition to a professional uh, Yemeni uh, but the uh, uh, the, uh, the Houthi militias have destroyed that and the uh, World Bank have withdrawn and then they came back and other international organizations have also uh, uh, withdrawn and how much Saudi Arabia uh, provided in 2006 up to 2014 43% uh, and uh, UAE, 15% and Kuwait and other countries uh, as you can see on the screen. 2006, the UK has held, uh, held a conference in which a number of countries can, uh, uh, took part in order to support Yemen and you can see that uh, the international community is very keen to support Yemen and uh, we are uh, also keen and eager to support Yemen and the UK has convened a conference to support Yemen and there were billions of dollars as uh, grants to Yemen, to Yemen and there were the Friends of Yemen conference and or a meeting that was chaired by the UK in Riyadh in collaboration with Saudi Arabia and the donors uh, provided these numbers. The countries that pledged to provide the support, uh, the, the, uh, the rabbit support, this was Saudi Arabia and it shown its understanding of the situation in Yemen and the deep and the profound relationship between the government of the former president uh, or uh, pr the current president Abdurrahman Bouhadi Mansour to Saudi Arabia since we believe of the strategic and profound relationship with Yemen. We do not uh, we do not exclude anyone from Yemen, even from Saada, Lahaj, Abyan, and from all the provinces. And there is no exception. And the Yemenis would come to work uh, uh, in accordance with the Saudi laws. Here, so laws of Saudi. On the screen, you can see also the rates of the remittance remit remittances of. Uh, uh, 61% of the remittances uh, remittance are from Saudi Arabia and then you have 18 from UAE and 5% uh, from Kuwait and 4% from US and other countries represent 12% 4 billion, more than 4 billion uh, remittances from Saudi Arabia for their families in Yemen and this is a hard currency to, su uh, to support the living standards in Yemen if you do a quick calculation Every household you have up to uh, between five and seven people, and you have 14 million people in Yemen are benefiting, benefiting from these uh, uh, wire transfers, and we cover 50 percent of the needs of Yemeni people. Before uh, start talking about about this subject, when. And there was a vision for f building a Saudi a program for development and reconstruction of Yemen. How we can move from uh, war to peace, or how can we transition from uh, war to peace to make Yemen a secure and unified country without being influenced, uh, foreign influence, in order to uh, create chaos. As you can see, you have different pathways and you have counter-terrorism and also recovery and also fighting narcotics 
and all these over all these elements all these elements overlap but i would like to reassure you in saudi arabia that saudi arabia is working in all these phases with regard to development and relief and stability and recovery even supporting the legitimate government of yemen in fighting terrorism and insurgency and building this uh, institutions of the states so you have the the uh, the you have the uh, sea guards or the coastal guard you have the coastal uh, the coastal uh, the coast guard you have we are building this uh, military institution and the saudi coalition with along with the yemeni government that want to build the uh, capacity in yemen we are working hand in hand with saudi arabia and other friendly countries such as the us and the uk in building the coast guard in saudi arabia in order to fight uh, terrorism and to fight uh, narcotics or uh, uh, drug trafficking and uh, still there are challenges uh, that could hinder the uh, millennial development goals and i will talk about them quickly Uh, the increase of population, uh, the, there is a high rate of population increase, and the funding capabilities uh, are limited, and there is uh, a weakness in the human resource development, and the lack of infrastructure, and also the, uh, there is a lack of food security in Yemen. Uh, the widespread uh, uh, the spread of poverty and the uh, inef inefficiency or the inefficiency of uh, government organizations and you have the climate change and this applies to every country and you have uh, foreign uh, international shocks such as the cyclones or or some tornadoes or storms and we hope that Yemen would become stable and, and the development goals in the Saudi uh, program for reconstruction and this has been taken in consideration with the Yemeni government uh, the Saudi program as I have said this is as a, fa a completion for what Saudi Arabia is doing or what uh, King Salman uh, is doing and also working with other organizations and this program and the program is working uh, with in order to develop uh, and building the capacity of the uh, state organizations and to weaken the role of uh, the role of terrorist organizations by development of the uh, human resources and keeping the youth uh, away from the terrorist organizations that the Houthis want them to continue on the opposite direction and we are seeking to encourage the uh, donor countries and we have seen international move and this is uh, something positive and there is a good international uh, move talking about development in Yemen and having visits to uh, Aden and other different cities and towns in Yemen and we in Saudi Arabia want that the, uh, the international uh, the uh, World Bank has uh, got involved to a great degree now and there is a private sector and we have support for the private sector uh, to contribute uh, uh, for uh, and also supporting peace and in all the provinces uh, we encourage peace and we give hope to the Yemeni people as a means uh, uh, that the Yemeni people are in need and we need to improve the services all this comes from the saudi uh, from the yemeni legitimate government and through the assistance of the yemeni government organizations and institutions as you can see you have the sectors the different sectors and the roads and airports and uh, uh, airports and uh, and electricity and fisheries and utilities 
and we have also executed uh, uh, programs uh, across all these sectors. Some of them are small and some of them are large projects and some of them are medium projects. And we have our offices on the ground and this is new. Uh, we have an organization that is working in Yemen and a Saudi experiment in working with our brothers in Yemen in supporting the Yemeni government by having uh, a Saudi program uh, that Yemeni and Saudi people are working on the ground in working with the central government and with the local authorities in order to uh, have development and in order to prevent uh, uh, not using not using the money that has been provided by other countries and by Saudi Arabia in uh, carrying out these programs and also and we are contributing in that one of the uh, prog programs that we have been working on this is a partnership with Yemen that has increased the efficiency of use and reduced the corruption and the positive role in Yemen for the uh, Yemeni people with these are the fuels uh, uh, different uh, we have provided more than uh, 180 uh, f more than 50 or 60 million uh, 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 of uh, the electricity stations or the uh, 16 uh, million and for more than uh, 60 uh, electricity substations and in Al Hudaydah in, in Aden, and you can see also the fuel. Uh, 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 this slide is important, and this program is being executed or implemented when we put it as a concept, as plans and uh, targets that we want to uh, implement. And this is uh, an example that we have. The fuel, uh, uh, this has increased the working hours. Uh, uh, the work is uh, being done 24-7. Uh, seven, seven. Uh, we contributed in reducing the uh, rate, on the, uh, or we have improved the rate of exchange between the uh, US dollar and the Yemeni real. And so we have also uh, provided foreign currency for Yemen. And the, uh, the, Yemeni, um, the Yemeni government is doing uh, a positive role in conducting the responsibilities of the state uh, in spite of uh, the fact that some of the young uh, of people are working with the Houthis and it has uh, uh, declared that it will uh, cover the health services in Yemen and pay the salaries for the people working in the health sector and also to uh, pay the salaries of the teachers and when we have provided them 60 million uh, US dollars uh, uh, and this is a huge amount of money and and this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the fuel has also improved the security situation and the living standards of the people are also improving the uh, business, uh, the, the business life. Uh, and also we make sure that this was implemented and there was a positive reaction to that by the Yemeni people. And in this program, we are working as a partnership for development and reconstruction with international organization. These are examples of the organization that we are uh, working with, whether this with the Yemeni government, and this is your, the, uh, uh, the institution with, that we are working with, and the Yemeni uh, government funds that we are working with effectively since they are independent of the government, but they are operating as part of the state, and we are working with regional and international organizations, and we also organized workshops and well, there were around four workshops and the World Bank have conducted uh, four workshops and the, the US and other countries are going to conduct other uh, workshops for the development and reconstruction of Yemen. And we will support our process in Yemen and we will continue to operate with the international, our international partners in supporting the Yemeni government and thank you for listening and before I conclude I would like uh, this uh, 
this child, I want to uh, talk to you about him. One of the uh, most, the happiest moments is this, this family, this child, if you could see in his, uh, in his eyes the future, and you see the reverie of the Arab, and how he's holding a book, uh, a, a textbook, a school textbook, as if he's holding a gun. And I'm very happy to uh, display this, uh, this uh, picture and to remove the guns and to take the books 